Well, the rhetoric continues to escalate, as you can see in the title of this particular one of many articles that have been written on the scrap between Kittitas County and the state of Washington, namely WashDOT. It was originally reported by David Croman in the Seattle Times. But what we are convinced based about, based on what is being reported in articles like these, is that these people in charge have no idea what's going on. They have a partial idea, but WashDOT is highly interested in veiling the entire truth because it would make WashDOT look very bad. And Governor Inslee, by the way. We've been covering this for a while. We started here with episode 42 with WashDOT Refuses Plow Help, and all of these videos since that time, with the exception of these two documentaries, are on this subject. Work your way through these videos, starting here and working your way forward to get a comprehensive understanding of what it takes to be a contractor with unvaccinated employees and work for WashDOT. So let's start here. You can pause the video to read all of the language in this article yourself, but I want to tease out a few statements that elucidate my point. Right here, you have a legislator that wants WashDOT to rehire unvaccinated employees who've had COVID-19. Now, think about this now. WashDOT fired 402 employees, all of whom were unvaccinated. Approximately half or so were maintenance forces. And this particular legislator thinks that if they just bring back those maintenance forces that have had COVID and they can, they can prove that they have antibodies, that that would be fair. But that's not fair and it's not even relevant because WashDOT is currently employing contractors that have potentially unvaccinated staff working for WashDOT. So if the contractors can work for WashDOT with unvaccinated staff that that contractor gave accommodations, then just having WashDOT rehire those maintenance employees that can demonstrate that they have antibodies is really not fair. Because the point is, is that WashDOT should be hiring back all of its unvaccinated employees because it can give them the same accommodation that it allows contractors to give their employees. So let's continue. So last Wednesday, Kittitas County absolutely skewered Roger Millar and WashDOT about the issue that we brought up here. Okay, now check out this video for a little bit of entertainment and just imagine how you felt finding out about this if you were Roger Millar. But check out the language here. Again, they're showing that they don't get the whole issue that the department turned down an offer of paid help because crews could not attest to being vaccinated. There's that V word that everybody has their laser beams focused upon. It's not the whole truth because crews can attest if they're being vaccinated or if they're being accommodated as unvaccinated employees. Now, of course, WashDOT is never going to admit any fault in regards to them firing employees that they wouldn't accommodate. And here you have an example of some dodging and ducking by Millar to assure people that this has nothing to do with the, the firings. He acknowledges that staffing for winter operations is below ideal levels, right? But he concludes here that even though they're short 140 employees, that it's because of COVID related hiring and budget freezes. Yeah, of course not. Has nothing to do with the firings at all. I mean, the firings had absolutely no effect on the ability to deliver work. He then goes and points to Montana, which has no vaccine mandate and has also struggled with snowplow driver shortages. The same is true across the country. Okay, so let's go ahead and divert people's attention to other states and say, well, you know, it's already a hard time trying to get enough people to do the job. Well, let's actually zero in on what that actually means. It means that you timed your firings of 402 WashDOT employees at the absolute worst time that you possibly could have chosen. And that's on you. Poor decision, you're to blame, bad play. Yes, we do have a staffing issue, Millar told lawmakers. Yes, we do have a budget issue, but get this folks. 
But the mandate is really a part of the solution to the problem that is the COVID pandemic. Really? Really, Roger? Nice semantic judo chop there. A solution to the problem. You know, you saying that that is true doesn't make it true. I have a question for you. Have you provided a detailed breakdown to the legislators on how many WashDOT staff right now have Omicron, even though they're vaccinated? How many are missing work and on quarantine right now? You know, I'd be interested to know if you would look at those numbers and actually still judge that this mandate was a solution to the problem. You know, Governor Inslee's vaccine mandate has only accomplished one thing for the citizens of Washington state. All it has accomplished is to deprive the public of vital services that they need because he fired the staff that could deliver it for them. So Millar does acknowledge the fact that they do have staffing shortages, but he refuses to acknowledge that it's a result of the mandates and firings, Barkas said. Yeah, of course that's going to be Washdot's take. You know, folks, in a way, the severity of this storm is something that Washdot is glad happened because it can blame 100% of the problem on the storm itself. As you see here, the state's work to reopen roadways was dictated entirely by the weather, said Washdot spokesperson Summer Erdary. You know, <laughs> staff levels did not impact the opening of the passes in a meaningful way. This was not a normal storm. The amount of snow and resulting avalanche danger drove the pass closures and kept road crews from working in several areas because it simply wasn't safe for the crews to be there. I have this question to ask you, the public. Who was there besides WashDOT to vet this? Now, no one doubts that this was an amazing storm. But the storm was big enough such that WashDOT could shield the details of the amount of work that they had available to them and continue to blame it on the weather. What I want to know is who was up there besides Washta to actually determine if what they're saying here is true. Folks, this is about government accountability. We have a government agency that fired its staff before a major storm event happened. And now people are upset that it wasn't able to keep the passes opened. Washta looks horrible in the public's eye. WashDOT is here telling us that its decision had nothing to do with the passes being closed that long because it does not want to look like it, the decision that it made was poor. WashDOT is the only one that was up there, perhaps. If not, who is up there vetting this information? So is it possible to conceive that WashDOT is massaging the story to save face? Think about it. Here's some more classic Merlar. His communication team did a good job writing this for him. If I were the proverbial Duke of York with 10,000 men at my disposal, I would not have marched them up the hill last week during the middle of that storm because it wasn't safe for anybody to be up there. Yeah. Nevertheless, Barkas remains skeptical that staff shortages played no impact, again pointing to the roughly 150 who left. Now, this really bugs me here. It comes up a lot. Left. We did not leave. We tried everything we possibly could to stay, and WashDOT shut the door in our face. However, I digress. I want to zero back in on the point of this video, which is to show how the people in charge either don't understand the process by which WashDOT can hire unvaccinated contractors, or um, it's not being reported as such. Anyway, but the state, but unlike the state, Kittitas County does not have a vaccine mandate. Look, there's only one mandate, and that's the Governor Inslee's mandate. What Kittitas County and other contractors need to do is have a plan in place to demonstrate to WashDOT that their employees are in conformance with the goals of the mandate. So if you are a vaccinated contractor, you're good to go. Show proof of it. If you're unvaccinated, then you need to have an exemption of, from the mandate, either religious or medical, and your employer has to show that they have an accommodation process for you. That's how it works. So vaccine mandate is not telling the whole story. The state instead hired a contractor that could attest to its staff's vaccination status to help clear the road. Again, 
This is not the whole truth. You can't explain this process in one or two words. What that contractor could do was show that it had vaccinated employees, and if it has unvaccinated, unvaccinated employees, it gave them an accommodation. It does not mean that that contractor uses only vaccinated staff. So let's, uh, let's deal with this last paragraph here. Ten House Republicans sent Inslee a letter Friday urging more exemptions to his vaccine mandate. Now look, more exemptions? This again, this is not what we need to be asking for. There are already two exemptions, medical and religious. There's nothing new to invent here. What they're basically asking him is to hire back employees that Millar fired. Okay? But what they need to be asking Millar and the governor is to hire back all 402 WashDOT employees because right now WashDOT is employing unvaccinated contractors. So if WashDOT is hiring unvaccinated contractors, then what in the world is the difference if you bring back experienced veteran staff who aren't vaccinated and just give them the same accommodation that you allow your contractors to give their employees? That's the question. And that's where this this discussion needs to center, but people are off base. Or, to be fair, these reporters are working with WashDOT to hide the whole truth because WashDOT does not want to be exposed as a hypocrite. I think we're appropriately disheartened to find ourselves in a situation where so many people are not vaccinated. Now, that's a quote right there from Inslee. He's frustrated with unvaccinated people. So here we have some more gaslighting going on and saying, you know what, this whole problem is all because of you folks out there that aren't vaccinated. <laughs> Listen, Inslee himself issued a proclamation by which he would allow staff to remain on board unvaccinated if he were to give them accommodation. But he wanted to lead by example. He took that off the table. He didn't accommodate them and kicked them to the street. While at the same time now, those people are being replaced by contractors who have unvaccinated staff on board that get that accommodation, the very same accommodation that Millar and Inslee denied their own employees. Now, if you find that what you've been told in this video is too much to believe, then let's just go to a document that Governor Inslee released himself about how a contractor can be put in charge of verifying the vaccination status of its own employees or give an exemption to those employees that feel that the vaccine is not right for them. This is put out by the state of Washington and it will prove that we could have unvaccinated contractors working for WashDOT. So you can actually uh, pause this video and you can read this language for yourself, but I'd like to call out two sections here and the second one is particularly revealing. What it says is, the letter will also explain that the contractor is responsible for vaccination verification for all employees and subcontractors. So you have a contractor that wants to work on a WashDOT job, and that contractor has vaccinated and unvaccinated employees. The vaccinated employees need to submit proof to their boss that they are vaccinated, which is the first half of the requirement, but check out the second half of the requirement and for approving or rejecting exemption requests, I call your attention to the two, that's medical and religious, and for those employees, subcontractors granted an exemption. So these are the ones where the employer, the contractor says, I will grant you an exemption because I have determined that you will get a accommodation. So if you have an accommodation, that you've given to those that have asked for an exemption, then you can clearly see that there's a mechanism in place approved by WashDOT for a contractor to use unvaccinated staff for contract work. It's This is the core of the issue, people, is that people are being diverted away from this fact. And what it has done is it has fired its own employees to whom it would not give an accommodation and it is replacing them with contractors who have an accommodation. Legislators, civilians, lawyers, people, everyone, focus on this. The issue is WashDOT is in a compromised position simply because this manner in which that it is placed 
in a position of authority to enforce what is allowed in its right of way makes it look like a hypocrite because what it determined wasn't good enough as accommodations for its own employees, it approves as accommodations for the contractor employees. So now we are looking at a situation where Washdot is under the gun for having too few staff because it fired them and what it wants the public to think and it wants the legislators to think that it's all about the fact that they only allow vaccinated people to work for them. That is not true. So I hope this video has been informative for you. I hope it in the end contributes to positive change in Washington State and I hope you've learned something through this. If you have any questions, if you have any contributions, feel free to contact us at fight-insley at protonmail.com.